All right. It's going to be a great interview. I'm excited as I can be to be here with the man, the myth, the legend, Chuck Fazio. Um, you are a legend. And, and to be honest with you, you're a legend above the ranks of, of people that I run with. So, you know, we're, we're, you know, we've been building teams that, you know, that sell, a, you know, 500 homes. That, uh, our biggest guys we know sell 1,000 homes a year. Um, you built a company with 800 and plus. I'm not sure what the exact number. 850 is what I put in here. I can't remember the exact number. Of eight, 850 agents, um, 27,000 homes sold uh, with your company since you started it. And um, I believe it was $7 billion worth of real estate sold. So I, I'm fully on board here today and Al um, and myself to, to learn, my friend. We are, we are, uh, we are proud to be, to be here on this call with you. And, and I really mean that because, you know, we're always trying to be in the room where we're the, not the smartest person in the room and we can really learn something. The, the business that you've built, we don't even understand what you have to do to be able to accomplish building a company that has 850 agents, to be quite honest with you. So, I don't understand either. It just happens. <laughs> right. Well, I know a lot of hard work goes with it, but uh, you know, this is going to be a great conversation. I'm really um, uh, excited to be able to share your story. Um, and, you know, ultimately, um, you know, the big um, you know, the big decision you made actually in January to join EXP, which is a huge deal. And everyone is interested in hearing your story and what you're thinking and where you're going with this and what the vision is. And so I'm excited to unpack that and, and help people see what you see, because you definitely see something and, and you've been around the block. Yeah. So so I, I just give a quick background of my past and uh, just jump right into why are we on this call right now? Um, I was I was raised in New York, lived in New York most of my life. And uh, I did. I, I ran the clubs for some of the, the mob and uh, it was a, it's a very uh, demonic lifestyle. And, um, you know. I got out, got, got away from all of that, moved to Arizona in 98. And I said, if, if I'm gonna work hard, what can I make a lot of money in? So I said, real estate. And I knew nothing about real estate. Jumped into real estate, started at a KW, uh, was there for about a year. Um, I was broke. And um, that's where I met my wife. She just started there. So we uh, kind of partnered up, even though she couldn't stand me at first. Um, but, but I'm good at sales, so uh, <laughs> I sell it on myself. And um, so we were broke together. And uh, two years in the business, I was broke. And, uh, you know, I never forget my dad saying, you know, go get a real job. That ain't a real job. And, and I said, there's, there's no way I'm going to fail. So I, I switched brokerages. And I, I'm not saying it's the brokerage fault. It, for me, it was more of a, a leap of faith uh, into believing myself and what God had planned. And. Uh, within three years, we were already selling 40 million plus of real estate a year from being broke. Um, started a team. And at that time, teams were kind of a new concept. In, and mind you, I never set out to build a team. I use that word loosely because it was just people said, hey, we want to be around you. And I'm like, why do you want to be around me? I'm, I'm freaking broke. And uh, they, they just said, no, it's the leadership, it's the motivation. So we started a team and uh, a, a couple of years after we were one of the top agents in the country, our team was ranked as one of the top teams in the country. And uh, it was just a whirlwind. And, and for us, it was just learning by making mistakes. Mm. Uh, we had nobody to lean on, nobody to trust. Uh, 2000, we thought the team concept of building that was, was going to be the answer. Like, oh, that's our, our magic ticket to, to make it some big money. And then we started to realize, wow, it, it's a lot harder to make money. You're spending your time training, coaching, them leaving, staying at the brokerage. I mean, you guys know, everybody out there kind of knows it's the same song and dance. And uh, so we said, hey, let's open up a brokerage. We opened up a franchise office of the company, uh, West USA Realty, and the, at the time at 3,000 agents, we were their number one agents. So he, he said, open up a franchise office, and we did. You know, naive to business. I'm not a business. I was never raised business. I'm a street guy. I was raised on the streets. And um, opened up the franchise office, realized their system sucked, and started implementing our own systems and build, 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 and just, we're just workhorses. And... Uh, started to see some success. Uh, and about what year, what year was this? What's up? About, about what year was this? Was this? 
would you say? Um, started in 2005 uh, and built. We, we got rid of the franchise three years ago um, because that was, that was nothing but a thorn in our side. And uh, so it became Revelation Real Estate. And, uh, you, you know, here, here's the thing. A lot of people don't understand. Running a, running a business is freaking hard. And, and people who don't run businesses, and I'm talking big businesses. I'm not talking little mom and pa shops. Uh, even though maybe you could say that's what we are. They don't realize what goes into it. They don't realize. They don't realize that, that, that a lot of my problems is not only getting agents and training agents, recruiting agents, retaining agents, but finding the right staff. And, and here's the kicker. And the right staff that shares the same values, the right. same principles. Because quite honestly, what I realized is what we did is we ran our brokerage like a team. Nobody ever taught me any different. I just know how to run a team. Right. And, and it's hard work being involved to leverage, to get two, three, four hundred agents. And uh, you, you got to hit a point that I call critical mass. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of brokerages, a lot of brokers, I'm telling you right now, a walk in that fine line of close to being out of the business. They might put on that facade they're doing great. Everybody says they're doing great, but I know the business. <laughs> you know I what's know going the business, on. I know the numbers. Oh, yeah. Man, and, this, this sounds eerie, eerie familiar to about two hours ago. We just did a training on, on team building, and um, we talked about – critical mass that was the word i was looking for i couldn't spit it out yeah but would you mind expanding on that chuck and wh- where do you see that tipping point because i think depending on your expenses it could be different it, it has to be different actually right yeah. and, and, yeah. and just to be clear the critical mass point is the point where when you're below that level you have a threat a real threat of mm-hmm. having to write big checks or even closing doors or laying people off but once you're above it where where do you see that well, that's a good question now because here's also the other threat. Here's what you gotta understand: that critical mass level is is that point that you're doing enough business that it's sucking the life out of you, but yet me and Angela still gotta sell real estate to pay some of the bills, and it's it's that one point that's almost the breaking point mm. that. Do you lay off staff? How do you hire quality staff? Because at this point, you really can't afford them. And, and I'll be honest, there was a point around 2008 that we were going to go, shit, we're not going to make it. This ain't going to work. And uh, we actually almost sold the company back to West USA Realty. I mean, we were in negotiations for months. And, and, and I was torn inside because... I'm like, I don't want to work for somebody anymore. And, you know, they offered me a sweet job in the company. I'm like, and, and you know, we prayed over it and prayed over it. And, and I, I was losing sleep. And and it got to a point we were sit down. This is a crazy story. We were sit down, ready to sign paperwork, to sign my brokerage of about 250 agents over to these guys who I, I particularly don't really care for the way they do business. A little bit of a toxic relationship, but I thought this was my way out from getting underneath this tidal wave that's about ready to crash. And at the table ready to sign, I looked at him and I said, all right, we've worked out all these details, but what are you going to pay me for my 250 agents? What are you going to pay me for my business? And I've been praying, God, show me an answer on what to do. And he looks at me and he goes, your business, he goes, your business is a liability to me. And I just got up and I said, that's the answer I needed to hear. I'm done. I am going to make this work. And that critical mass was, is, Al, I don't know numbers because numbers range differently from any type of company, but is that, it's that tension point that either it's going to snap and you're going to collapse or you broke over this threshold and stuff, a momentum is created. That is just, when you're in it, when you run a business like that, it's the most, um, it's a crazy feeling mm. to all of a sudden, you just, you, it's like you, you caught a tide and, right. and you have momentum going. And that's what we hit. And all of a sudden, we, the, the right staff started to come along and the right people. And then fast forward to 
three years ago, um, I like to do things big. I, I mean, to me, man, I go through this life one time and I'm going hard. Okay. Now, I don't go hard stepping on people, but I believe God saved me from my past life to do something enormous. So I said, how much bigger could I go? We were about uh, maybe at about 550 agents doing about maybe 600 million a year. And God gave me this vision three years ago. And as everybody goes, no more bricks and mortar, no more bricks and mortar. And, and I know why I'm on this show, but it's going to, it's kind of be like a little crazy play in this, but, but you'll, you'll get my, my feeling behind it. God said, you're going to build the biggest office the industry's ever seen. And I'm talking a physical one. And he, and he, the vision I had was, was perfect, like clear to me, even though it was an insane thought concept. And then about two years ago, we started to look for uh, space and buildings. And do I go into a shopping center? Do I look for an old uh, supermarket or, or whatever it is? And, and, you know, the Lord just keeps opening and closing doors. And because I couldn't find somebody that could understand my vision. Then I found a builder who built us a custom building. And the guy said, Chuck, tell me what you're looking for. Give me a shot to build it for you. And I did. And he, he designed, the architect designed it out with the floor plan. And I said, that is exactly what I'm looking for. So here we are about a year and a half ago, opened up 21,000 square feet, state-of-the-art building, full bar, cafe, kitchen. I got a full chef on staff. Uh, training center, event center, game room, 7,000 square foot resort patio. Now, here's why I did it. I did it, not necessarily I go believe in bricks and mortar, but I believe we need to be around like-minded people. Mm. We're losing that. We're losing that not only in this industry, but the world. And I said, I got to give people a reason to connect because I believe in it with all my love. And that's what we did. And um, so hence we, we opened up this building and uh, my building's constantly packed with agents. So then the question goes, well, why are we on this call with EXP? So I'll tell you one more quick thing so, so you can share my mindset. As I'm building, there's very few people I could reach out to that number one is I trust, number one that um, is gonna help me build something and share their ideas. Nobody either is at the level I was at or my competition ain't gonna to wanna to help me, obviously. So my wife a few, three years ago said, hey, I wanna to go to a, a Dave Ramsey conference. And I always knew Dave for, for financial peace and never knew that Dave Ramsey is this business-minded guy who owns like several bit successful businesses and financial peace isn't his biggest one. And it's called Entree Leadership. So I'm the type of guy, I, I always sit in these masterminds and I'm like, look, I get nothing out of it. There's no value or people are holding back. We sat to one of his, his entree leaderships and got trained by him, got trained by Chris Hogan and, and around these successful business people. And after three days, I walked out and I looked at my wife and I go, we don't know shit. And I go, well, that's a good thing. Because we're going to go to another level. And we did. We started to get coached directly from Dave. And, uh, you know, when you're around people like uh, Dan Cappy from Chick-fil-A and uh, all these other big hitters out there that, you know, Alan Bellotti, CEO for Ford. And you start to realize surrounding yourself with big-minded people make all the difference in the world. And we actually got the prestigious Momentum Award from Dave because just by doing that little thing, being around people who get it, we took our company, we were at about 700 million to 1.4 million to this year we'll do two, uh, not million, uh, 1.4 billion. So this year we'll do about 2 billion in production. And it's solely because I'm around like minded people. Right. That's, that's amazing. So, hey, just why am I here? So, uh, you know, Curtis Johnson, uh, I knew him in the industry. Curtis reached out to me a few years ago, was looking to close down his brokerage. 
looking for a shop to hang his license to grow and build and and uh, looked at a lot of places and uh, Curtis joined on with us to build his team and uh, I got to know Curtis well and it was really great working with him and we powwowed a lot and he's a like-minded guy and he's a builder but um, we had tough conversations about Chuck it, it, it's still hard to build a team you know with many of us even saying especially your brokerage your brokerage is unlike anything I've ever seen because you run it like a giant team. So we were having these tough conversations. And then one day, uh, and he told me, he goes, look, I'm looking. I'm out there just, I'm looking, Chuck. And I'm like, hey, man, I got it. Look, you know, no, no one agent will ever make or break my business. Um, and and he's, he's a good guy and he's a communicator. So he says to me one day, he goes, yeah, but you're a VXP Realty. And I go, yeah, I've heard of them. They, I got approached by them a, a few years ago. And he goes, well, what do you know about them? I go, yeah, it's like a multi-level marketing business, which is a viable way of doing business. Um, I actually like that way of doing business. But when I sat down with the gentleman, I don't even remember the guy's name. You, you know, I said, look, number one, don't sales pitch me. I know this business like the back of my hand. And so show me your numbers. You, you know, I get the multi-level marketing. You're selling me on hey, you bring in an agent, you, you get money off of them. And they bring in an agent, they get money. And I go, yeah, here's the problem. If nobody's selling real estate, if nobody's selling the product, nobody's making money and they're just sold on the dream. And there is no dream if the product's not being sold. And two years ago, I said, you don't have a product. Not interested. And uh, so when uh, Curtis brought that up, that's, that's the conversation we had. And he says, no, no, I think you really need to look at this. And about the same time, uh, Jay, I, I seen you make an announcement. You went over to EXP, and I'm like, and I followed you for a long time. And uh, I said, wow, all right, Jay made the move. I said, let's explore this, Curtis. And we chatted through it and looked at the model, and um, I, I, I seen that it was a real company. Maybe, maybe they jumped, they were a little ahead of their time at first. But now they're a real company, and it grabbed my attention. And that, that's what started the ball rolling to say, I need to investigate this. And uh, I'm a visionary. You know, I, I believe God shows me things, and because uh, I do. I pray for discernment. I pray for visions. Uh, um, you know, we, we were talking the other day, Al, and I, I, I'm not a goal setter. I'm a scripture. I don't set goals, but my visions are huge, and I know them. And they're very clear to me. They're like embedded in my mind. And for yeah, seven of, years, God. No, I was going to say, one of my good friends, coach and mentor, John Sheplak, doesn't doesn't do the goal thing either. Yeah. One of the one of the top most sought after coaches in the nation, and uh, he, he he's just I mean same same methodology. Now we do set we set goals and targets, and there's no right or wrong. I just want bringing it up. You're not. You're not the only one that's successful that thinks that way. Just for anyone listening that says, oh, well, I'm a goal setter. Here's proof yeah. that uh, there is another way. Or, or the opposite. You know what I hear a lot of uh, when I hear seminars and meetings, everybody says, you've you got to be a goal setter. you got to. So then you get people like me going, shit, I'm never going to make it because I, I, that doesn't compute to me. So they get people, if they don't understand the push through, they get discouraged because they feel like they have to figure that out. No, it's not your strength. Some people it is. But for seven years, because I watched this industry, I'm a problem solver. I love looking for problems because I want to solve them. I don't want to go, oh, it's a problem, let somebody else fix it. So for seven years, my, my wife brought this up to me when I was talking about EXP. She goes, you realize you've been talking about this vision for seven years, and I've been saying to agents at my office, uh, producers, the team leaders, because I'm helping them build teams. And I would say to every one of them, point blank, I said, if I ever had the opportunity to do this again, I would never own a brokerage. I would build the biggest team under somebody else's umbrella. And then I'd always finish it up with this, but there's nothing out there that would work. Seven years I've been saying this. My wife reminds me, you know how many years you say that over and over to agents? And then I'm going... Wow, this is, it. this is it. If if people think what I built is big, the team I'm going to build is enormous. So I'm going to jump back to Curtis because so so we had this conversation and me and him were in on it and 
and, and Curtis introduced me to you, Jay, and we had the great conversation that we had, and I, I was liking what I was seeing, but I was still torn. I go, I, I, run, a, I run a big brokerage, and this is, this is my, my baby, you know, I built it, and I built it with a culture that's like nobody else. So I said, Curtis, this is a big deal for me. Like, if I did this, I, I mean, it's, it's going to cause like, like a wave going through my office. You know, because people always think where there's smoke, there's fire. But that's not always the case. And then you got your gossipers to throw into the mix, which really suck. So I, I, I said, you know what, Curtis, I'm praying on it. Uh, we, we had an opportunity to talk to Glenn Samford. Super nice guy. I, I, you know, because number one, I got to believe in what I'm selling. It's not my company no more. Might be my team, but not my company. So I wanted to make sure me and Glenn were on the same page and understand what my vision was. Um, I wasn't selling off my company. Um, for, you, for you idiots out there who think me, I'm getting a divorce from my wife, that, that gossip is the biggest horseshit. And believe me, people are spreading it. And, and wow. it stings me. Oh, yeah. They say, oh, Chuck did that because him and Angela are getting a divorce. Uh, first of all, I just want to make it clear. That's the love of my life. She's my best friend, my business partner. So that'll never happen. But so, so I said to Curtis, all right, Curtis, I, I'm... I'm really thinking about it. Are you thinking about doing this? And Curtis says, look, I'm just going to let you know, Chuck, I've been with you for a year. And Curtis said to me, he goes, I'm not going to do something you're not going to do. If you don't do it, I'm not doing it. And I said, all right. I go, let's do it. But, I mean, there's obviously stipulations. I'm taking a huge risk. You're going to go over there and start building. So, you know, the way it's going to work would be I'd go in first. He'd come in underneath me, start building because... Quite honestly, I, I, I run multiple businesses, and at that time, you know, we're still a little less than a year old in the building. I'm still looking for a chef, so I'm cooking in my, my kitchen. I get to put systems in place for a bar cafe manager. You, people don't realize what I do on a daily basis. It's insane. So I love it. Let's, can, can, we, can we dig into that a little bit? I mean, yeah. you have an amazing facility. You got, you, I heard you, you, you told us you have bands out there on the weekends. Oh, yeah. You guys are, are built off of a rock of culture, and I'm fascinated by it. Can you just touch on it? I know that we're going yep. in a slight different direction, but I mean, no, that, no, your it, leadership it, and your culture is, is, is the reason why we're on the phone right now. Yeah, Alan, or, but it, it, it's really not a different direction because it's, it's really the direction of what, what Glenn just built here. And, and uh, it's why it's good. I, I know for a fact it's going to grow into the biggest company in the industry. It's the same way I built my company. The only problem when somebody goes, why, Chuck? You, you just built this business and it's rocking. And two reasons, and I'll get into the culture part of it. Two reasons is one is I'm going to be the first company to ever cap my agents. I'm not looking to, to grow to thousands of agents. I, I, I don't want to. I can't sustain it, and it's not going to happen. Two is I have the most unbelievable staff that runs my company. Unbelievable staff. And the culture where you say we, we talk about this building is basically why I built it. Um, one of my models that I base off of biblical principles, Proverbs 27, 17, it says iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. And, and that truth rings so clear. So I said, if I build a facility that's more than just real estate and attracts the best of the best, and we provide things like food and fun and bands and uh, seminars, and they're going to come. You know, you, you build it, they come. And it did. And, and there's not one person that doesn't walk into my office and go, I've never felt energy like this. Well, I always say, first and foremost, the spirit of God, that this is his office, and he's blessed us with it. But it's that culture. But then, so people say, what with the YEXP? Well, here's the thing. I was given a gift. I was given a gift to build and to be a blessing. I only have one office. My office ain't duplicatable. It's not. I can't, I'm not looking to build anywhere else. I have walls here that, that I, I can't be out of, and the walls meaning territory. And Glenn built the platform that was waiting for me. That's how I look at it. He built that platform yeah, yeah. that I've been speaking into truth for years that I'm going to now take the gifts I know, the way I built this company, and you just knock down the walls with a culture that I could take all over the country and hopefully all over the world. And, and, and here's the cool part. And with partners like you guys, 
and somebody like Curtis and, and the other partners I'm bringing in, you know, that Daniel Beer and Kyle and Jennifer Weed. I mean, come on. It, it's like it's like we're creating the damn dream team in real estate. <laughs> it is. I feel bad for the other brokerages. I, I feel bad. Sorry, guys, but I think I think that's what we called it in January when the last time we we talked. I think we we've been saying it. It's the dream team, but now the dream team's back. Chuck's back. Let's right. go, let's go. Let's, let's go. It. Man, I, I'm I'm excited. I, I, I'll tell you, it's it, it's. I go through life and I go, how big could you dream? And and I teach that to agents. I go, what's your purpose in life, man? We walk around like a bunch of zombies out there. Most of us. Get a purpose, get a drive, get out there. When you align yourself with people like you guys and the people I told you, and it's just adding more and more, you can't help but come alive. Mm -hmm. You can't so live. It's, it's, it's like, and, and here's the cool thing. And then when you take that negative-minded victim gossiper mentality likes to complain and you drop them in my office, it's, it's like you just dropped a piece of cancer in there but into a healthy body, and that piece of cancer can't survive. Yeah. And it's got to leave. And it's the craziest thing. Yeah. That's what I want to build on our team and our downline. Yeah. And hopefully this company, and it's not just residual income. Oh, my gosh, the tools, the system, the training, the, the, the mastermind. It's off the charts. It's off the charts. There's it's, that stock, too. Yeah. Don't forget oh. about the stock. I, I, you know what? That don't hurt. It drives me, but hey, if you want to throw that in, great. Eh, why not? Right. So, you know, one of the, one of the things I want to unpack too is is you you had you'd made a comment um, in a conversation recently about you know about the lie that 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 real estate broker brokers in particular are are telling agents in, in their brokerage, and uh, I thought it was really a, a a great comment. Would you mind sharing what you meant by that? You know, it's it's um, it's a very strong word to use. Lie. It's the only word I can get say to get somebody's attention, but it, it might not be um. It, here's the thing: lie is a lie, but it might not be blatant. It might not be you know I'm setting out to hurt you type of lie. But there are there are lies in the industry that I will tell you right now. I, I see on, on a daily basis, a weekly basis. I, I see it at a level most people don't see it, and and here's what I mean by that. We're in an industry that fairly recently, so I don't care if it's the last 10, 15 years, I don't know the number, all of a sudden people are talking about this team concept. Build a team. Maybe coach some agents. Maybe mentor some agents. It's not a concept that's been around for a long time. It's so It's fairly new in the real estate world. And, and I'm hearing more and more of it. And I believe me, I get agents come in my office. Like, I want to build a team. And I'm like, you sure you know what you want to get into? Because <laughs> it's a flawed concept. That's the lie. But but I want to deviate for a second. And I want to think I want to think bigger here, guys, because you can't solve a problem without really understanding the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. So yeah, teams is the problem. The team situation and brokerages is, is, is a big lie. But but why is it? What makes up that lie? So here's how, here's how I analyzed it. Real estate, for the most part, are, are filled with agents that really have an entrepreneur mind spirit. They have leadership qualities. You, you know, you're not going to get the average Joe, you know, a driver on a desk that, that wants to go put in time and effort without a paycheck or knowing they're going to get a paycheck. So there's a certain mentality that you have to be wired to be in the, in the industry. So once we understand that, once we understand, and not everybody, but most of them, and that you, you want to be your own boss and you want to be a business, once you understand that mindset, then you start to go, okay, so it's normal for them to gravitate towards wanting to build a team. Here's why. Because that type of entrepreneur mind spirit goes, all right, I'm, I'm trading time, my, my time for money. What more could I do? Oh, a team. Because then you have to go, what are your options if you want to make more money in this business? See, the options is, number one, a team. Two, maybe just coach and mentor agents. Or the third is, go up and up your own brokerage. All of them are flawed. They're all flawed right now. Because the, the team concept, when I say it's a lie, here's why it's a lie. 
It's because now you have a guy who says, I'm going to build a business. Well, are you really building a business if it's under somebody else's umbrella? That's number one. Number two is you're going to train, coach, mentor agents. That you don't even know if they're going to make a sale. You can't control them. You can control yourself. You're in control of yourself. But now you're working with people who might have put on a good show when they were interviewed. But now you can be spending all this time and energy with something that's out of your control. And then there's the opposite. You work with something and you pour everything into it and they become successful. And what do they say? <laughs> Have a nice day. I don't want to pay you. <laughs> and they stay at the brokerage. It's actually funny. Curtis is the one who really it hammered that home because he was losing agents on his team and they were staying at the company. And Curtis goes, do you know what it's like looking at these guys every day? And I'm like, shit, I got to suck, Curtis. <laughs> you know, but I'm going, they're still at my brokerage. I'm not going to get rid of them. So then the other lie, and, and not really with my company, my company is just a little different because I feed teams. I, don't, I have a, own my own real estate school. But every other brokerage, you've you got to be out there and you're a recruiter. So now here's what happens. So now I'm the broker, and I go to all these team leaders and go, hey, good job, guys, recruiting. Because they're recruiting into my office, so I don't have to pay for a recruiter. You're doing the work for me for free. I'm still getting a piece of it. And then if you build them up, they're going to wind up leaving and probably stay with me. Thank you very much. That's a lie. That sucks. That's insane. Right. In my opinion, when, you, when you're dealing with that concept, you know, when it's even mentoring and coaching, you're still in the same boat. And then there's no leverage. So now let's look at the, the other option. You know, you'd be, I'm going to start my own brokerage. <laughs> Good luck with that, man, because you have no idea what comes along with that. Most of my days are sucked up dealing with lawsuits, dealing with problems internally, dealing with staff. I can't even put my time into the agents. So, so now, take this industry as a whole. We're taking this new concept and trying to fit it into an old model. It's like taking a square peg and trying to ram it into a hole. It's not going to happen. And it's not going to be very successful. So, so that was one of my big lies. And the other lie that I see in the industry is when agents come in, and it depends how successful you want to be, but, but you always just sky's the limit on what you can make. It, it's really not. It's really not because if you're working, you're exchanging time for money. Yeah. So sky's not the limit. But when you deal with residual income, <laughs> sky's the limit. Yeah. It's a big difference. You know, it, it's brilliant that these these points that you're bringing up, there's so many people that I believe that are watching right now who can relate. But the difference is, is that myself, Jay, just about every human in our mastermind can relate to everything you're saying. But on such a micro level compared to, you know, it, it's the level that you're you're talking about. It, it, it's uh, it's validating to the last we went Facebook live, Jay, Mike and, uh, and John Kitchens a couple hours ago. And we were touching on these very things, but on, on a very micro level with, you know, I came to EXP with nine agents, nine, you know, I can count them like, you know, that many. And in 11 months, we, we, we've turned that into uh, 36 agents on the team. And it's the same, you know, a lot of the same pains, but we're, you're talking about doing this on, from 500 agents to 850 agents and, and, and talking about challenges that, um, you know, I just learned something right here. You, you, you don't have the time to spend with your agents because you're dealing with with lawsuits and all the stuff that's not fun about the business. Right. And um, that was just enlightening. So thank you for sharing. And, I, that. and I'm going to tell you, it, it's not only the time you put in. It, it's the mental it's the mental it just jacks with your mind, because. One of the things that over over the years of, of being, when I'm around people like yourself or, or successful people or, or hanging out with Dave Ramsey and these top leaders, it's a different mindset. It's not a victim mentality. Mm -hmm. And when you deal with these people, most of them, not all of them, but most of these lawsuits, you're dealing with people that you go, I, I can't even believe I'm sitting in the same room with you. And sometimes my, my past wants to get the best of me, but I, I just refrain myself. And, um, and, and here's my lawyer, you know, and then I'd say, and, and my pride and ego is horrible sometimes. And I'm like, they're blatant liars. And my lawyer goes, I got it. Here's the problem. They, they know the game. They take you to court 
it's going to cost you more in lawyer fees than then paying them the 50 grand that they're looking for. Do you know what that's like handing over 50 grand to people that are pieces of crap? Mm. It, it jacks with you. It, it, here's what it does. It's like, I, I'll say to my wife, I go, I don't know why we do this shit. And this is not once in a while. This is a lot. Or dealing with agents that want to leave your company that, that, that literally been say the nastiest shit that I don't know where they get it from to make themselves feel good. Mm -hmm. So, so people don't realize that the environment of this building business, building this business is extremely hard. What I'm going to build now, hey, look, you, you want to be a victim? Go be a victim by yourself. Right. I'm going to attract and attract and attract. And I will tell you, there's one other reason that I didn't tell you guys that the psychology of why people do what they do. Because I've been studying this for years. When you run a brokerage this big, you see every agent and what they do and how they do it. Who's the successful ones? Who's the not? And there's a, there's a pattern. There's a simple pattern to being successful. And one of, obviously, first and foremost, work, period. I mean, you know, novel concept, work. But, but there's a mindset. There's a link, a direct link, when people find meaning in life. Once again, and this is what I teach a lot to agents, if you get to a whole nother level, if you don't have a purpose in life and a meaning in life, you, you ain't going anywhere. And so how do people find a meaning in life? No, we were created to be around each other. We were created this way. Innately, we as humans should be helping people. But we as society pull on that. No, no, it's all about me. It's all about me. You know, every commercial says it. Hey, what can I do to make you feel better? It's about you. It's about you. And we get brainwashed as society. And, and this, is, this is an idea. This idea of, of that helping others is, is one of the oldest concepts. I mean, philosophers and, and thinkers throughout all of history said that the central feature of a positive, well-lived life is through helping other people. Mm -hmm. Once you get that, I mean truly get that, your life changes. I think that the, the distinction that I'm drawing with you though, Chuck, and I mean, I think this is obvious to anybody that's been listening to this broadcast, is that you're a different, you bring a different um, value to the table than your mm -hmm. typical trainer who's just yeah. helping people. You're a visionary. You said it at the beginning of the broadcast, you're a visionary and it gives me goosebumps because you've inspired me in the short period of time that we've been on this, this broadcast. I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling emotional just about how fortunate that I am to even be honest with you. I may cry. If I cry, this, the, the ratings are going to go out the roof. Don't make me cry. Uh, please but no, seriously, cry. like Chuck, you're a visionary. And here's the thing, what the value that you're bringing to people is you're helping them see that vision. Yeah. There's people that, they have a vision. They, they, it needs to be pulled out of them. I believe that's what you do. I've seen your huddles. I've yeah. watched the vid because you guys videotape your huddles. I've seen you and your your beautiful wife yeah. in front of your entire company casting the vision. And I think it's what's missing in leadership. Yeah. You know, it's 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 that visionary and getting people to see it. Not just your vision. It's it's getting people to pull it out of them. They got to burn the boats. You, you get know, rid of anything. You, you know, know it's, you know how you, you nail it on the head and. And I do come at it from a whole different angle. I come out from an angle, and believe me, I, I'm, I'm vocal about this. People who know me know it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not afraid to, you, you know, I, I was saved 14 years ago. I was taken out of a life of hell and into, into a completely radically changed life. And I, I'm here for a purpose, and, and my purpose is to glorify God. And you, you don't glorify God by preaching to him. You glorify God by reflecting him. And if my actions, not my words, don't speak it, then what kind of a soldier of the Lord am I? So when I teach and when I train, I, I just ask for God to tell me, what do you want me to talk about? And most of my trainings are not about real estate. Because here's what I will tell you. That's the problem. The problem is we're, we're trying to Help get, go. Why are you selling real estate? Why don't you get this concept? Why, why don't you look? We could we could take the best of the best trainers and teach them, but you know why they're not doing it? Because their life's jacked up. Mm -hmm. This is not fixed yet. 
Do you know the number one reason why I'm so successful in any of my businesses is because I've got the perfect marriage. Because my home life is stress-free. I do it with my beautiful wife, my best friend, my soulmate. There is no tension between me and you, me and her. So, so I'll ask you guys right now. If you had a fight with your wife this morning, what kind of condition are you going to be in right now? Right. Are you going to be in the best? Are you going to be at your A game? No. And you know yeah. what's sad? You know what's sad? Most people live like that. And they want to know why they don't bring their A game. So when you guys are at, at teaching or training and you have a room full of people and, and you're going, why, why don't you guys get this? You know why? Because most of that room is not even in their A game. So if you don't solve the, if you don't solve the root to get them in to make them successful, you, you're beating your head. It's like a fly. Keep flying into a window. They can see it, but they're not going nowhere. Mm -hmm. I, so powerful. I get it because I live the past life. And I tell everybody, I go, I'm not successful because I have the perfect marriage. Now, look, it's not stress-free. We run big companies. But there is nothing between me and my me and my wife every night. Here's what we do every night when we're done working together. Is we go, we're having a date tonight? She goes, I really want a date tonight. We have date nights like every friggin' night. And just talk and powwow. And so even if your spouse isn't in the business... Let me tell you something. If business isn't your life together, you're missing it. So that's what I'm reaching. Purpose of life. Once you get that, that's your foundation, not real estate. You can't be successful in anything you do until you lay down the right damn foundation. And you know what's crazy? How many of my agents go, hey, you know, I'm not, would you marriage counsel us? And I'm like, not me. And we do. And you see their business change. Purpose of life is huge, guys. I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's everything. Wow. You can't function at 100% if your home life sucks. <laughs> well, I knew this was going to be a great interview, but, but man, you, you hit that one out of, out of the ballpark, Chuck. We didn't talk about this on our powwow yesterday in our notes. I'm looking at my notes here. I'm not seeing them. <laughs> I'm, I'm not seeing the magic you just shared. Did somebody slip Thank you the you. notes of the guy tomorrow? I mean, I right. Don't... No, Thank that's you, great. Brother. And so, wow. so here's the thing, guys. I, so when, when I, people say, why are you doing this, Chuck? Why? Why are you taking a, I'm not taking no risk. Look, the people who know me at my company love me. They know what I stand for. They know who I am. The people who don't get it that want to spread the gossip and don't want, there's the door. Don't let it hit you in the ass on the way out. As a matter of fact, pick a window. It's time to leave. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> But well, we know you got plenty of those. Oh, yeah. That, that was my 8,000 square feet. <laughs> but, but the thing is, is... 21,000 square platform, feet. Glenn, Glenn's given me a platform to do what I do best on a bigger level. On a much bigger level. If you think about it, I mean, it's crazy. Both Steve Jobs and Henry Ford revolutionized the world by solving problems people didn't even know they had yet. Think about that. Right. What Glenn's doing for agents is solving a problem for these agents who don't even realize that they have a problem yet. You see, the people that are moving are the people that are going, wow. Do you, do you, can do I share the parallel I just made? I just drew a line, and I got to share this connection. You know what this just reminds me of? And I know that you're, 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 you're a very spiritual person, and I respect that. Um, and, 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 and this just has, has to do with the spiritual, spiritual connection, but it reminds me of Joel Osteen. Joel <laughs> Osteen grew an amazing, but he, listen, he grew an amazing church. He outgrew it. And then he had to buy a stadium to fit all the people in Texas into it. And then people still, he had to syndicate it. So it feels like you built this stadium in Arizona. You filled it and you can't fill it anymore. And now it's time uh, to syndicate uh, it. Wow. You, you just, wow, well, I'm still. Is that, that fair? Because it's just I'm what popped into my that. mind. <laughs> I still, that one's, that one is just, that's tremendous. That's tremendous. It's just, right. I, I, I couldn't help but share it. I mean, he's an amazing human being. Um, yeah. And he has a work ethic that reminds mm -hmm. me of yours, but it feels like you just busted out of the stadium. And now EXP is going to allow you to spread that word all over the United States, Canada, 
We're going to go all over the world. This is going to be a worldwide thing. Oh my gosh. And, and when people, when most people look at it, they look at it from the physical standpoint. They're like, Chuck, you, you just built this building and you already have eyes on something else. And, and here's what I say. I go, it's not the building. And, and you, wow, Al, you just really nailed it because I know I'm doing God's work. Uh, this, these skill sets and this mind I have is, is, is I pray every day, every day. I go, Lord, use me as a vessel. Fill me. Give me wisdom. Give me discernment. Give me visions. And he does. And it's crazy. So that it's not the building. The building is just, it's just stepping stones. And Glenn is providing a platform that I've envisioned seven years ago that God already ordained for me. I'm just walking in his footsteps. So when people, when, I don't question. I know, you know, Jenny, and you have conversations when I say, watch what I'm going to do. Just watch. And, I, and I know people all say this. And, and here's the thing. I don't question. I already visualized it. Right. It's not if it's going to happen. It's just when it's going to happen. And my whole joke, as I tell my wife, I go, we're going to be in Italy building EXP, and I'm going to stay there half of the year. So i got plans to be in Italy. Right. Love it. <laughs> I'll be right there with you, partner. <laughs> you know, and, and, man, you, it, this truly is a, an inspiring conversation, and I'm, I'm in just in awe and of having the opportunity to be in business with you and, and be partnered with you and, and, and be in alignment and, and working together. You know, you know, I don't know if, I mean, I hope that people see it's not just talk that it, this is you, your life can change in an instant when once you realize who it is that you surround yourself around oh, yeah. and they ra they raise, you know, you get sucked up to the top like and that. That's, the, you know, when you when you get in this environment and I, I just believe that what Glenn has built is attracting the right people and repelling the wrong people. It really is. And that's what we want. That's it. It is what we want. And, and it's a, it, that's a beautiful thing. And, you know, and when it comes to, you know, all the ways that, that we can help, you know, any, anybody that's thinking about this, whether they're, you know, just an individual agent or they're, they have an independent company and they're not, you know, they're not accomplishing their dreams where they're at or they have a team. And that's the case. Um, all I would do is encourage you to reach out, reach out to Chuck, um, um, and ask questions. You know, what are you missing? You know, that's the that's the big thing that uh, you have Chuck, to. Chuck, how, how could somebody? What's the easiest way for someone to reach out? Would it be email, Facebook? Like, what's your? How could someone reach out to you? They can they can reach out to me any way they want. You know, here's what I want to say before before I tell it. I, I want people to understand that that a meaningful life is not found; it's created. You, you're not just going to stumble into a meaningful life. You guys got to go out there and get it. I feel bad for people who have no drive. I feel bad by people who are crippled in their fear because what are you fearing? You know, this it's happening. The writing's on the wall. It's being done. We're seeing it go. People are moving, and, and I'm moving with it. So to, to answer your question, here's what I want to say. I, I want to say that if you're out there and, and you're questioning what you're doing, if, if, if you ain't 100% sure what you're doing, you're questioning it. If you're feeling lost, like I just got no structure. Every day I get up and I don't feel like I'm living my dream because your days are numbered. Every one of our days are numbered. If you're feeling lost or if you feel like just in your core, there's got to be something more to this. Mm -hmm. More to this life is what I'm talking about. Feeling unfulfilled. And I'm not just talking about real estate or EXP. Here's what I'm talking about. I'm talking to anybody out there. If you're feeling that way, reach out to me. I ain't going to sell you on EXP. I don't sell nobody on nothing. We attract. I, I don't want to convince somebody. But I will tell you, I'm called to do something bigger. And I'm called to be a blessing and to help people succeed, whether it be in their personal life, in their spiritual life, in their business life. That's my job. I look at myself as a soldier. I don't care who you are. You reach out to me. I will call back anybody that calls me. I, it, no, it doesn't matter how busy I am. People say, well, you're so busy, Chuck. I got it. But that's what I do. So they can call me. My, my direct line in Arizona is 480-570-8020. Um, or you can email me at exceltraining at gmail. That's X. S-E-L-L -L, training at gmail.com. 
I have a can couple you, of cool things. Can you say that again? One yeah. more time, Chuck. Excel training. So it's X S E L L training at gmail.com. Um, I'm actually going to be creating something for anybody who, who wants to be part of it and listen. I'm going to be doing uh, um, mini, uh, I don't know if you call them podcasts or whatever. They're, they're like three, four minute things. And it's going to be coming out in about a month. And it's going to be called Proverbs 2717 leadership.com. And basically, I'm going to show you how scripture, everything about business, everything about I do is actually written in the word. So when God tells you to do something, you do it and you wonder why it works. That's why it I'm works. typing. I'm typing this into the uh, thing. So I got Proverbs and then I. Give 27, it to 17, 27, Proverbs 17, 17, 27, 17. Train leadership. Leadership.com. Yeah. So that'll be that'll be done in about a month. It'll be rolled out. And, uh, you know, guys, I'm, I'm blessed to be around you. I don't believe in coincidences. Uh, this is some cool stuff. I just want to mastermind. I want to help grow however I could. You, you know, the one thing to also to leave it out is I, I know what it takes to build a giant company. And my tools and systems, a lot of them, uh, I created myself. I do my own training. So I do no real estate really well. And uh, so I'm going to be using a lot of tools and systems to help agents uh, anywhere be successful. And, and I will be doing, I had the chance to chat with your partner, Michael Reese, who's, who's phenomenal. The, the guy's phenomenal. And uh, I'm going to be going out on the road uh, and he's going to be coaching me through a few things. So uh, if you want me to come out to where you guys are, make, let me know. I, I'll be there guys. This is uh, an awesome thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Electric man. I, I'm stoked. I'm excited about the opportunity. I'm excited about really, the one thing that I would summarize it as is the impact that we can make in, in uh, the, not just in, in people's lives, but really in, 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 uh, in the world. So that's what this is all about. And uh, appreciate you having uh, taken the time to, to share your story and, and share your vision with us. And um, looking forward to taking that next step and making a ding in the universe, guys. Yeah. Can I leave off with one thing? Um, yeah. if, you, if you want to know more about me, I got a book out, Mastering Your Real Estate Career. Um, that's on Amazon. And tomorrow on uh, uh, CBN 700 Club on, on TV. So it's CBN's 700 Club. They're actually doing my testimonial on TV tomorrow on the CBN 700 Club. So awesome. All right, guys. Absolutely. Well, Chuck, I, I know I speak for um, my partners, Mike and Jay, when I say that we are, uh, we are locked arms with you as soldiers right next to you. And, um, we, uh, you know, Jay said something a few years back, way before EXP was a, a thought in our, our minds. And he said, wouldn't it be great if we can combine all of our fires into one big fire and, and let it burn brighter? And, and I just feel like after this call, um, you, I'm welcoming your log onto this fire, man. I mean, it, it's, it, just bring it on. Let's throw it on and let it burn because it's going to burn bright with you in it. I'm excited. I'm renewed, and I'm uh, I'm excited to be be in business with you, partner. I appreciate oh, you. Vice versa. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Have a great time. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks.